What stories are you making up about your significant other, about the person that you're dating and what they're doing or not doing? What are the stories you're making up about what they're saying or not saying? Our brains make up stories all the time. Our brains are meaning-making machines. That's their whole job. So what stories are you making up about your relationship? What stories are you making up about why someone's doing or not doing what they said? What stories are happening around your safety, your security, and your comfort? What are you telling your friends about? Let's talk about how our stories and our brain actually can destroy our relationships right after the show reel. <laughs> okay, I've been doing this work for a long, long time. And I have spent weeks, weeks with my brain hijacking me. So I'm dating this guy, right? And my brain has been trying to tell me for the last few weeks about all the ways that I'm not being served about how, well, he didn't do this, so that must mean that he doesn't like me. He didn't do that, so that must mean that we're not gonna move in together. He didn't do this work, so that must mean I have to hold all the masculine energy, that I have to take over the relationship. Maybe this isn't the right relationship. And the interesting thing is, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that he has done or said or not done or said that actually backs any of that up. So what's happening? Well, somewhere in my brain, I wanted a certain thing, but I didn't express it. And this is what happens. This is the problem that we see in relationships is that we don't express, or sometimes we don't even know what it is that we actually want. And then our brain starts going into all the stories because something inside of us doesn't feel 100% secure or doesn't feel like our needs are getting met or that we're being heard or they're not even telling us they love us in the right way or whatever it is for you and for others. So we just know that we're not getting something, that there's something stressful, there's something lacking. And then our brains fill in all of the gaps. Like if you've ever met anyone that's been in a coma, their brain often tries to fill in the, uh, the missing spaces in between. For example, someone I know had been in a coma for a couple of months. And when he came out, he was determined to tell everybody how the nurses were in his room doing drugs, having sex with each other, right? His brain literally filled in the gap with all these stories and his mom was like, I've been in the room with you the whole time. None of that ever happened. I've been here all two months. I guarantee you the nurses weren't in here doing those things, but his brain believed it as if real. So what is your brain making up? Because your brain cannot tell the difference between reality and imagination, which is why manifestation is so beautiful. If we can feel the feelings and really be in it and see what we want and visualize it really, really strongly, we can create it. But we can also create negativity in our relationship because our brain makes up stories and then we feel the feelings and we say what we're going to say in the argument and we hear what they're gonna say back and we make it so real that it's as if reality. And then suddenly our brain thinks that's actually what's happening in our relationship. So my question for you is where are you making up stories in your relationship? Where are you envisioning manifesting something negative, manifesting stress in your relationship, creating things that do not exist instead of actually looking at Here's where I want to be in my relationship. Here's what I want. Here's how I want to feel. And remembering the times that they made you feel that way. Not made you. No one can make you feel anything. But the way that you felt that way when you were with that person. The way you asked for your needs to get met and those things happen. The way they showed you loving consideration. Now, not every relationship is meant to last forever. And. I could have just sabotaged a whole really positive relationship if I had allowed my mind to continue down that map. And I see this happen over and over again with people where they're in a relationship 
and then they sabotage it. And then they're in a relationship and then they sabotage it and they blame it on the other person. And sometimes it's the other person, but wherever you go, there you are. So if you find yourself in the same relationships, having the same challenges, the people not doing the same things for you, and then you're complaining about the same things to your friends and your family members, notice, what is that about? What is not getting met? Where is the fear? Some of us have a fear of connection. Some of us have a fear of losing independence, especially as women, it's all like this boss babe, babe bitch stuff going on right now. We're supposed to be strong and independent and do all the things and take both the masculine and feminine roles. So can I step back and allow my femininity to come forward and feel safe in the structure of a masculine man? If I can't allow myself to feel that safety, of course there's gonna be conflict in the relationship. And if my mind is making up stories about how I can't rely on anyone, it's gonna be challenging for me to drop into my feminine. So instead, focus on what you want. What are the good things that you want? The desires. Take the learnings from past challenges that you've had and start applying those to the future. How can you communicate more clearly? How can you set and hold better boundaries? And boundaries need to be expressed, by the way. Do you want to do it? Yes or no, first of all. Do you have the time, money, and energy to do it? Yes or no? If so, what are the conditions that need to be met? And are there any consequences if those aren't met? All of those need to be stated out loud when you hold the boundary, when you create a boundary. So take your learnings. And by the way, stop complaining to your friends and family about your significant other, because when you speak those words, it creates that reality not only out loud in the manifestation in the universe, but also in your mind, in their mind. And that creates more power, more negative power. If you sat down and told all your friends how amazing your significant was, other was every single day, how do you think that would shift how they treat him, how they talk to you about him, how they interact with you, how you interact with your relationship? versus complaining, bitching. Because if the relationship is that bad that you need to complain all the time, leave. I'm not saying don't share struggles with your friends because of course we all go through struggles, but are you taking ownership of what's going on with your portion in the relationship? Or are you blaming it all on the other person? So make sure if you are talking through challenges, how do I get through this? When you're getting support from your friends and your family members, that you're doing it in a way that also says, here are the challenges that we are having, but you should also be talking to your significant other about that. If you're talking to everyone else and not them, it's never gonna get fixed, is it? So to summary, Stop making up stories, <laughs> take ownership, find positivity. And if you know that the relationship isn't right anymore, instead of staying and hanging on because, well, at least you're getting some needs met and it's kind of okay, leave. You are doing so much good for that other person. If you leave a relationship that's unhealthy and you're doing so much good for yourself because that opens up for both of you to find the relationship that you actually want, desire, and deserve. Just remember, you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable. Namaste.